So what is rammed earth building? Well, that's a question I've asked myself more than once. And it turns out my question was answered recently by a rammed earth building specialist, Clifton Schooley. Clifton has been building rammed earth structures for quite some time now. And it just so happened that his latest project was on Gabriel Island. So I got to see what it was all about and this is what I learned. All right, hello. I'm here today with Clifton Schooley who uh, specializes in rammed earth home construction. Um, so Clifton, why, why did you come to Gabriel? What are you doing here? Well, uh, Kathleen, who I had taught a course two, two years ago, she invited me to come and teach a workshop on her house. So, and this is her house that is going up? Yeah, we're doing four walls. Four walls? Four walls. Okay, so she's a past student. That's kind of cool. So yeah. she's helping you with the process? Yeah. Yeah, sweet. All right. And so when you say four walls, I noticed you've got one big wall behind this. And yep. that's, what's the purpose of this wall? This one right here is for thermal mass, so it's behind the fireplace, so heat will soak into it and radiate after the fire is up. All right. That's the main thing. It's aesthetic too, right? So it's a giant heat sink. And yeah. Then, yeah. Aesthetically, okay, well, we're going to show you this later because the beauty of rammed earth is the, uh, what do you call it, stratification yeah. or the... Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we'll get into a, a, a little bit of that later, but I just wanted to introduce you first to uh, Clifton, who's been uh, kind enough to let me come down here and, and film some of the, uh, the process. Looking forward to it. Thanks very much, Clifton. You're welcome. Okay, now Clifton, uh, you're doing rammed earth. Uh, can you tell me exactly what that is? I would be happy to. A lot of people, they don't really understand what rammed earth is. They think that it's some kind of mud construction or it's just kind of some dirt on the ground, but actually it's subsoil material, non-organic, and it's primarily composed of gravel and sand. Then right. what you have in there is you have fine powdery silt and clay, but the clay is not really like when you're making pottery. The clay is just like a powder that's distributed through the mix and optimally for what we're doing is only 10 to 15 percent of the mix so basically you have an aggregate composition that's very similar to concrete okay so that's what it when it's packed down it's going to make a very strong matrix of stone and sand all right so in, in essence what it is is you're making you're mimicking geology and what we're doing is we make a damp mix mm -hmm. which we're going to talk about after um, we make a damp mix and then we compress it in the form either by hand or using a pneumatic tamper what that does is it just pounds all the particles together and makes it hard and dense, basically mimicking stone. So this, uh, in a sense, kind of like sandstone. Yes, that's actually the best description to say what is it like because the texture, when done properly with the right moisture, is more like a sandstone texture. All right. But it's, it has all kinds of different sized stones inside of it. Working with rammed earth is similar, but not the same as working with concrete. Plans are drawn up, footings are poured in the traditional sense, then forms are constructed for the rammed earth walls. In this case, there were four walls. One large wall inside the house would double as an accent wall in a heat sink, and three narrower walls on the front wall would flank two sets of French doors. The formwork varies from traditional formwork as there are no ties holding the sides together. One of the main reasons for rammed earth walls is their aesthetic value, so clean, finished surfaces are the goal. Looking at the formwork, one can see the heavy use of pipe clamps and 2x10s to brace the forms. This method provides a clean, empty box to fill with rammed earth. Once the forms are up, it's time to mix, and this is where rammed earth parts from concrete. Sand, gravel, Portland cement are mixed with a coloring agent and water is added. And as Clifton said before, it's a damp mix, not a wet one. You don't pour rammed earth walls. You build them by compressing the earth and lifts using hand or pneumatic tampers. Uh, like, uh, yeah, what, what would you call them, lifts? Do you yep. put lift? So what would your average lift be? Typically about eight inches. About eight inches? Yeah, that loose material. And okay. It depends on the density of the material that we have, but you know, it might compact down to five inches. 
All right. You know, approximately. It, it's a matter of taste, you know. You, you make the lip too big, then you don't get the proper compaction. Yeah. If you make it the right size, you kind of have to have a happy medium. If it compresses really well, that's the number one thing. And uh, secondly, you want to... Um, you want it to compress well, but you also don't want to just make super small lifts that compress well, and then it takes you a lot more time because Forever, man yeah. manpower is very important. So you don't want to waste manpower, and you want to keep the job just moving along. Yeah. So you you have to find that sweet spot, and that seems to be about it. Yeah. You know? And I noticed you shine for the corners there. Is there a reason for that? It's mostly aesthetic, but it also is a practical thing is it keeps the corner from chipping off or anything if someone hits it with a 2x4 after or okay. something like that. But it's just like when you're doing woodworking. Yeah. If you take a router and you route off the edge of the wood, it just looks, it's a far nicer look. Yeah, aesthetically it's, yeah. yeah. As it softens the edge. The beauty of rammed earth is that you can play with the colors to create very organic looking seams within the wall. And if you want, you can add other ingredients like crushed oyster shells or lava rock to create some beautiful effects. As the walls are built, lift by lift, rebar, electrical conduits and insulation are added as required. In the interior thermal mass wall, rebar extended from the footings right the way up to just below the upper surface. On the three remaining outside walls, rigid insulation was added to achieve the required R value and electrical conduits were also added. The outer and inner rammed earth sections in each of these walls were in turn tied together by rebar loops. The finished wall had a thickness of 22 inches. So, from mixing the earth, to transporting it to the forms, to shoveling it in, to tamping it, each wall was built lift by lift. When one wall was finished, the forms were left in place overnight, then stripped the next day, cleaned, and reused for the next portion. As each section was revealed, an umbrella of sorts was built on top to protect it from the elements as it continued to cure. Once Clifton and his crew were finished, they were off and it was time for the next round of contractors. Rammed earth building has to be one of the most aesthetically pleasing forms of construction. It is absolutely gorgeous to the eye and lends a real organic look and feel to any structure. On top of that, it is fireproof, rodent proof, has great acoustic properties, and will last many lifetimes if done right. Oh, and did I mention it was beautiful? For more information on rammed earth construction, Clifton can be found at rammedearth.info. Thanks for watching. This is Scott Wilson from Gabriel Island.